Adventures in Time and Space. Transcribed in Future Tense. Dimension X. Can you predict the future? Can you tell what will come in a hundred years, or in ten, or in the next minute? Tonight, Dimension X brings you a glimpse of what may well happen within your own lifetime. The Robert Heinlein story, The Roads Must Roll. It was in the middle 1950s that the automotive age began to die. The traffic engineers had long expected it. For years, they had watched our vast cities sprawl and spread out, spill over into the countryside, become more and more dependent on motor transportation. And then finally, the inevitable breaking point was reached. The growing flood of cars and buses and trucks began to swamp the streets and arterial highways. The building of roads could no longer keep pace. The superhighways clogged, congested, became packed with cars, stalled bumper to bumper. And the cities began to die of slow strangulation, for the traffic could no longer roll. And then the engineers took over. They banned the automobiles, tore up the superhighways, and in their place they built the rolling roads. Mechanized roads that moved like huge conveyor belts, whirling along on their giant rotors at speeds ranging from 5 to 100 miles an hour, carrying the freight, the food, and the people from city to city and coast to coast. An engineering miracle had changed the face of a nation. The automobiles and railroads vanished. The rolling roads had taken over all transportation. And no one worried over the fact that if the roads should ever stop, our whole economic life would stop. But the machinery had never failed yet. The machinery that rolled the roads was perfect. But people forgot that machinery depends on men, the men who run it. Who makes the roads roll? We do! That's right! The engineers! Not the supervisors, not the mechanic union, but the engineers! We're the brains of the roads! And where would the public be if we didn't keep those roads out there rolling? Right behind the eight ball, and everybody knows it. All right, then. We're the men who hold the power. It's time we started using it. We've called this meeting of the Engineers Control Committee because that's what we want to do, control. Because I'm tired of taking orders from the Transport Commission from slick desk jockeys like Jim Gaines who don't even know a rotor bearing from a field <laughs> Let Gaines yammer about our duty to the public. That's a lot of eyewash. We've got the power, and we're the men that count. It's time we quit fiddling around and use the little direct action to get what we want. Let's go. Let's go. The chair recognizes Brother Harvey of the Transport Mechanics Union. Uh, uh, thanks. Thanks. Uh, thanks, boys. Uh, I, uh, I don't rightly belong here since I'm no engineer. Uh, I'm just here to represent the workers' union. But uh, I want to know what's all the shooting for. You engineers have got better working conditions than we have, and we ain't kicking. You say you engineers are powerful. You say you can tie up the road. That's right. Well, listen, so can any screwball with a jar of nitroglycerin. Hey, what's he yeah, and he don't need no engineering degree neither. Harvey, are you speaking for your union now? 
Or are you here as a stooge for the Transport Commission? Yeah. Well, <laughs> listen, I, I helped found my union, and I led the strike in 75 for decent working conditions. Where were you engineers then, huh? With the speech! Oh, sure. oh, 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 oh. Remember, you're only a guest at this meeting. Go on, man. Now, listen, men. I'm one of the old engineers on the road. You all are. Worked up the hard work. We didn't go to the fancy technical institutes like those young punk cadets the commission is training to take over our jobs. That's right, man. Jim Gaines, don't fill us full of the old school spirit and that baloney about how the roads must roll. <laughs> so all right, then. Why don't we get smart for a change? What would happen if the roads stopped rolling? Maybe the country would begin to realize that they can't do without us. And maybe we'd begin to get the things we want. I put her on. Jim, I want you to stop off on your way home. I'm sorry, darling, I can't make it. Oh, but you promised. Yes, I know, but Washington called in. They're sending Evans, the Australian Minister of Transport, through my sector today. I've got to show him through personally. Well, can't somebody else? Well, I'm chief supervisor. It wouldn't be courteous. Darling, courtesy begins at home. I've planned this dinner for weeks. Honey, the roads must roll. Jim, if you quote that nauseating Again, I'll divorce you. <laughs> well, I can't help it, darling. I tell you, I'll meet you at Stockton at nine. We'll take in a show. Yeah. Kiss Alan goodnight for me. Well, all right, dear. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye, darling. Mr. Evans is here. Uh, send him in. Go right in, sir. Well, good evening, Mr. Evans. I'm Gaines, chief engineer. How do you do, Mr. Gaines? Well, won't you sit down? Uh, thank you. Ah. Um, they told me at the embassy you'd be the man to see. Oh, I want to know how the roads work. I think we can handle that. I'm not a technical man, Mr. Gaines. My field is sociology. I suppose you'd tell me about the roads as if I were entirely ignorant. Well, fine, fine. <laughs> well, it's nearly dinner time. Suppose we run up to Stockton sector for dinner. All right. Take us about an hour on the roads and you can see them working. Excellent. If you'll excuse me for a minute. Of course. Hi, Chief. What can I do for you? Oh, Dave, you're on the evening watch, huh? Where's Van Cleek? Oh, going to some meeting. I'm going up to Stockton for dinner. Anything to report? No, sir. The roads are rolling. Okay, keep them rolling. All right, Mr. Evans, let's go. This, this here is the low-speed strip. You ever ridden a conveyor before? No. That's well, quite simple. <laughs> Remember to face the motion of the script as you get on. Well, that's it. Okay. All right. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll go right across here. Each adjoining strip is a few miles an hour faster than the one next to it. I see. Freight is carried on the 50-mile strip. Most passenger traffic is on the express strip. Oh, yeah. All right, now, watch your step. Right. Here we are, maximum speed. 100 miles an hour. Amazing. <laughs> this strip makes a round trip San Diego to Reno in 12 hours. Oh, Oh, here's a restaurant. Ready to eat? But is this a restaurant? There's a sign, Jake's Steakhouse, fastest meal on the road. Is, is it really a proper restaurant? Yeah, well, the best. Hooked right into the moving strip, of course. Shall we go in? <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello, hello there, Mr. Gaines. We don't see much of you out on the road. Well, busy in the office, Jake. Oh, <laughs> too, eh? right this way. Uh, thank you. Here we are. Now... What'll it be? Well, you order, Jake. Well, um, how about a stick? Two inches thick from a steer that died happy. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> fine. That's <laughs> nice. Uh, plug me in the intercom, will you, Jake? Sure, there's a talk box right next to you. Flank two, Ryan. If you excuse me, Mr. Evans. Davidson on watch. Uh, this is the chief, Davidson. I'm at Jake's Steakhouse. Uh, you can reach me at 10L66. 10L66. Well, now, 
If I can get a hold of me in an emergency now. Mr. Gaines, what kind of an emergency could there be? Well, two principally. Power failure on the rotors would bring the road to a standstill. Mm -hmm. If that happened during rush hour, we'd have to evacuate millions of people. Well, well, as many as that? Oh, yes, easily. There are 12 million people dependent on this section of road. Oh. Gaines here. Hello, Chief. David. I just got the hourly reports in. Proceed. Cadet engineer Gunther, while on watch, was found playing cards with C.J. Ross, technician on duty. Any damage? One rotor running hot, but still synchronized. It was jacked down and replaced. All right. Have the paymaster give Ross his time. Turn him over to civil authorities. Place Cadet Gunther under arrest. Bring him to Road Town Central. Yes, sir. All right. Keep him rolling. As I was saying, Evans, there are two possibilities of danger. Can you visualize what would happen if the strip under us would break? I, uh, I hadn't thought of that. You don't realize you're traveling at uh, 100 miles an hour. <laughs> well, it can't break, not now. The strip has a safety factor of over 12 to 1. <laughs> this is good soup, Jake. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Gaines. But you know, Evans, a break did happen once in the early days. That was on the Philadelphia-Jersey City Road. Damn me, no. That's right. The strip wasn't much more than a conveyor belt then. You know, it buckled for miles, crushing passengers against the roof. Yeah. Forward section in front of the brake spilled them down under into the rotors and the rollers. Uh, was it uh, very bad? Over 3,000 people were killed in that break. But, Evans, the roads had to go on. You know, the entire economic system hangs on the roads. If they stopped now, the country would starve. Isn't it possible that you've become too dependent on these roads, Mr. Gaines? For example, what if you had a strike? Uh, we had a strike back in 75, but... Well, there's not much danger of that anymore. Oh, no, why not? Every cadet that goes to work on the roads today is a graduate of the United States Transport Academy. Oh, I see. They're all picked men, screened for emotional stability. They're trained to give us the same kind of loyalty that Annapolis and West Point develop in their men. Uh, you're a graduate, I suppose, Mr. Gaines? No, no, I, I was too old for that. The academy wasn't set up till after the strike in 75. But it won't be long now, maybe five or ten years, Evans, before the oldest engineer on the roads is a man who's who's been through that academy. Now, Gaines here. Davidson, Chief, there's trouble in Sacramento. What is it? What's happening? Emergency stop. Hello. Hello, Davidson. The phones must be out. Come on. Jake! Jake! What is it? What's the matter? Have everybody stay in the restroom, Jake. What's that? Probably somebody stepped onto the next trip. Got cut to ribbons. There'll be plenty of casualties. Jake, where's your getaway hat? In the pantry. Well, how am I going to help those people? I've got the whole road to think of. Now, don't bother me. Give me a hand, Jake. This hat is stuck here. All right, if you're coming with me, Mr. Evans, you've got to move fast. I haven't got any time to waste. Freeway on top of the inner road ceiling, though. That's the outer shell over us there. But are we going outside? No, there'll be an excess down manhole over here. They're spaced every hundred feet. Mm -hmm. It's there by the green light. I got you. Oh. All right, this will get us down on the northbound road. Careful now, it's dark. All right. Stand away from that door, Heaven. But this road is still rolling. Yeah, so it is. It was only the 100-mile strip that stopped. There's what I want a phone booth. Look out, Evans. Excuse me, will you? Hey! Out. I'm talking to my wife. What Don't do argue. I'll... I'm a ball. Emergency priority. Division office. Davidson? Gaines here. Report. Chief, where have you been? I've been calling... Never mind that report. 709 report. Strip 20 past emergency level. Interlocks acted and cut the strip out. Cause of failure unknown. Direct communication to Sacramento control office out. Evacuation of strip 20 commenced. No casualties. There are casualties. I saw them. Put police and hospital routine A into operation. Get me Van Cleek. I want him to take over for me till I report in. We can't reach him, Chief. Shall I cut out the rest of the road? No, keep those other strips rolling or we'll have a traffic jam the devil himself couldn't untangle. There are five million passengers on that road now. Notify the governor that I've assumed emergency authority. Arm all cadets available and await orders. Shall I recall technicians off watch? No, this isn't an engineering failure, man. That whole sector went out simultaneously. Somebody cut those rotors by hand. Now, I want all available senior class cadets to report to Stockton subsector office 10. 
with pistols and tear gas. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, the, the governor wants to talk to you. He called in. Refer him to somebody else. I'm busy. I'll get back to you. I'm going down under. can't hear without an anti-noise filter. All right, come on. What are we looking for? A recon car. There should be one here. Are those the rotors? Yeah, the big ones are rotors. They drive the road. The little ones are rollers. They give continuous support. I see. Oh, there's a watch gang now jacking down a rotor. Can they hear us? No, the noise filter works on a four-foot radius. I'll flash them. <laughs> he sees the light. Is that posted reporting, sir? I want your recon car emergency. Yes, sir. Right over here, sir. Come on, Evans. Well, it's so small. Oh, well, you fit. Oh, All right. Oh. All right, now. Hang on. She accelerates like a rocket. Oh, oh, oh. my stomach. Oh. Relay station. This is Gaines. Get me Davidson, senior watch officer. Mr. Gaines, the mayor wants to talk. I haven't got time. Get me Davidson. Leave this circuit hooked into Davidson's board until I tell you to cut it. Yes, sir. Here's the senior watch officer. Davidson. Gaines calling. Have you found out yet what's stopping the road? No, sir. It's still a mystery to me. All right. I'm on my way in a recon car. Hold everything till I get there. Reporting, sir. Three platoons of cadet engineers standing by with tumblebug motorcycles. Are they armed? Pistols and tear gas is ordered. All right, good. Assistant Supervisor Van Cleek is calling you on Circuit 9. Oh, it's about time. Cut me in. Yes, sir. Hello, Van. Where are you? Sacramento office. Unless... Uh, Sacramento, that's good. Report. In a pig's eye. What? I'm not your deputy anymore, Gaines. Va- Van, what are you talking about? Now, don't interrupt me and you'll find out. It's true, Gaines. I've been picked as director of the engineers' control committee. We're taking over. Have you gone off your rotor? You can't start. Strip 20 until I'm ready to let you. Van. I can stop the whole road if I have to. Van, Van Creek, I'll call in the army. How'll you get them here if the roads aren't rolling, eh? Listen, Gaines. Whoever controls the roads controls the country. And right now, that happens to be me. Sign off, Gaines. I've got to call the White House. You behave yourself. You won't get hurt. I don't believe it, sir. He's got us, Edmonds. If we go in and blast him out, he may wreck the road. What's your rolling tonnage now? 53% under evening peak, sir. How about strip 20? Almost evacuated. Yeah. Listen in on this, Davidson. Standing by, Chief. I'm going down inside with these cadets. We're going to work north, overcoming any resistance that we may meet. The watch technicians and maintenance crews are to follow behind us. Each rotor, as they come to it, is to be cut out from under Sacramento's control, then hooked into the Stockton control board. You understand? Got it. Check. If it works right, we can move control of Sacramento's sector right out from under Van's feet. And he can stay in his office there until he's hungry enough to be reasonable. Edmonds, get me a pistol. Well, Mr. Gaines, there's a man here, and he's badly hurt. He wants to see you. Take care of him. I haven't got time to... He's from Sacramento's sector. What? Sir. Send him in here. Mr. Gaines. Mr. Gaines. T- take it easy. Mr. Gaines. You're... I... You're Harvey from the mechanics show. Uh, tried to warn you. Tried to get away. Shot me. Three times. Uh, get a doctor, will you? All right, now. Easy, easy, Harvey. Harvey, how long has this been building up? Isn't the man? It's the engineers. I, I told them they were crazy. Told them the roads got to roll. And when I tried to get away... To... Easy, now. Bleeding from the mouth. Harvey. Harvey? Harvey? Can you hear me? He's dead, Mr. Gaines. Come on, Edmonds. We better move. All right, you men. You saw Harvey brought in. How many of you want a chance to kill the louse that did it? All right, men. Anybody who hasn't got his mind on his job will be in the way. Now, here's the order. We move north, mounted on tumblebugs. We're going to try to regain control, rotor by rotor, before Sacramento sector knows what we're moving. Now, we've got to capture any watch personnel we run on before they can get word back, you understand? 
Men, surprise is vital. Use tear gas when possible. Shoot only when necessary. But get them before they can reach a phone jack. Can you hear me? Any questions? No? Then move out. <laughs> What's the score, Edmonds? 33 prisoners so far. No one kills them. Cool. For years since I rode one of these tumble bugs, yes. forgotten how to steer it. There's, there's a man ahead. There at the rotor base. Yeah, he's got a phone jacked in. Hurry. If he gets word back, we're sunk. I, I don't think he's seen us. I'll dismount and get him. All right, Edmonds. Halt! We're out fire! Quick, he sees us. Come here, you. Look out. He's got a gun. Oh. I got him, sir. I got him. Grab his gun. Yeah, he had an intercom jacked in, all right. If he's got through to Sacramento office, it's going to be tough. I don't know, sir. Maybe he can get the call through. Listen. The road. Take off your noise filter. There. It's a road. The road is stopping. Halt your man. Halt. Hold up there. Hold up. Edmonds, there's a recon car coming up. Relay station call for Mr. Gaines and the recon speaker. Give it to me. Here you are, sir. Gaines here. Davidson here, Chief. Man Cleek's calling you. Who stopped the road? He did. Oh, he did, did he? All right, cut Van Cleek into me. You thought I was falling, eh, Gaines? What do you think now? All right, Van. The road has stopped. You've won this trick. Then why don't you get smart and give up? You can't win. You forgot something, Van. You can't lick the whole country. Yeah? Gaines, I've got a switch button in my hand. If I'll push it, it'll blow 300 yards straight across the road. And then, for good measure, I'll take an axe and wreck the control station before I leave. That's pretty drastic, Van. Yeah. If I blow this charge in the middle of Sacramento sector, it'll get an awful lot of people. There are plenty of shopkeepers still on Strip 20. That row of apartment houses next to the road will go. Now, look, Van, uh, you don't want to blow the road, neither do I. Uh, suppose Van and I come up to your headquarters and we talk this over. Two reasonable men ought to be able to make a settlement. Is this some kind of a trick? I'll come alone, unarmed. My men will stay here. All right. All right, Gaines. But one long robe and I blow the road. Well, we've, we've got to hurry, Dave. If I take too long, Van Cleek will get edgy and set off that charge. I can't understand it. The psych tests are rigid. We've never had a failure in the Hum Wadsworth Burton method. Then suddenly a whole sector goes sour. How could Van Cleek get a whole crew of psych cleared men to revolt? It's easy, Dave. As my deputy, he was ex officio personnel officer for the whole road. He must have been faking psych records for years, transferring maladjusted men into his sector. I've got that personnel record, Mr. Gaines. Oh, thank you. This is Van's record here. Masked introvert, inferiority rating seven, and comment. In spite of potential instability shown on Wadsworth Curve, this officer is especially adept in handling men. Uh, he's adept, all right. I haven't got time for any more, Dave. Chief, are you actually going up there to Van Cleek's office? I've got to. They'll be armed. They'll kill you. I've got to take that chance. Why don't you call in the army? He won't dare blow the road then. Yes, he would. Look at that psych record there. He's putting up a big, brave front, but he's rotten inside. He wants to be taken seriously. He wants everybody to think he's the most dangerous man in this country. If I call the army in, he'll try to prove it by blowing the road. But how can you stop him, Mr. Gaines? He'll have a gun. What will you have? What will I have? Only a prayer. And what I know about Mr. Van Cleek. <laughs> All right, Gaines. Director Van Cleek will see you now. Gaines, I want you to sign this now. It's a declaration of your recognition of the Engineers Control Committee. You've got one minute to sign it, Gaines, or I'll... I'll push this button and blow up the whole sector. You better sign, Gaines. You need this gorilla with the gun, Van? Why are you... Can't you handle one unarmed man alone? All right, Harry, out. But out, out. Yeah. Okay. Gaines, 
All right. Now sign. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? You are no about You are, man. You start a revolution because you think the engineers should control the road. Then when you've got control, the only thing you can think of to do is to blow it up. That's kind of silly, isn't it? All right. Tell me what you're so scared. I'm not scared. Yeah, sitting there sweating all over that push button that you're holding. If your buddies knew how afraid you were, they'd probably throw you into the rotor. I'm not afraid. <laughs> you're afraid of me right now, Van. You're afraid I'll have you on the car. Got one minute to time. You're afraid the cadets won't salute you. You're afraid that they're laughing at you behind your back. No, 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 I'm not. You keep quiet now. I've got a gun yeah, here. Yeah, you're afraid of using the wrong fork at dinner. You're afraid people are looking at you, Van, laughing at you. I am you. not. I am not. Yeah, you dirty stuck-up snob. <laughs> Just because you went to a hi-hat school, do you think you're better than everybody, huh? You and your crummy little gold braid cadet. Van, you're a pathetic little shrimp. I understand you perfectly, Van. You're a third rater. All your life, you've been afraid that someone would send you to the foot of the class, so you ride out on your ear where you belong. I don't want to look at you anymore. You, I'll show you. I'll put a bullet in you. Put down that pop gun before you hurt yourself. Don't you come near me now. Don't you come near I'll shoot. I'll shoot now. Give I'll... me that, Ben. Let me go, will you? Give me that pistol. Yeah. I thought if I wounded your little ego, you'd forget to push that button and pull a trigger instead. I'm not afraid. I'm afraid you'll never make a good executive, Van. They have to know when to punch buttons. No, no, I'm not. You can Gaines here. Chief, are you all right? I... Yeah, I'm all right. I am. Attack now, Davidson. Mop up. I'll hold the control room. I've, I've got Van Cleek. I think his little revolution is just about over. Mr. Gaines. Mr. Gaines. Oh, Mr. Evans, I forgot about you. I've been waiting at the sector office. Yes. Is everything under control? Yes, all's rolling. Those are the watch engineers going under to check Sacramento sector inch by inch now. Remarkable organization. Remarkable. Well, thank you. Powerly's in chief. San Diego Circle rolling. Bakersfield, Fresno, Stockton. 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 Oh. What? Oh, no. What's the matter, Chief? The trouble, Mr. Gaines? Well, there sure is. I promised to meet my wife at Stockton for a show. She's been waiting there since 9 o'clock last night. Oh, dear me. Dave, uh, Dave, see if you can get her for me. Try the sector office. All right, Chief. And, and Dave... Uh, see if you can calm her down. Huh? Oh, sure, Chief, sure. Uh, uh, I'll tell her the road must roll. No, no, don't tell her that. I, I don't think she'd appreciate that. She's heard it too often. Well, I better get going. Bye, Dave. Keep them rolling. rolling along. You have just heard another adventure into the unknown world of the future. The world of... Dimension X. Next week, the strange story of the test pilot who became the first man ever to invade outer space and of what he found when he got there. Listen next week to... The Outer Limit. Tonight's adventures in Dimension X. The Roads Must Roll was written by Robert Heinlein and adapted for radio by Ernest Canoy. Featured in the cast were Wendell Holmes as Gaines and Ralph Bell as Van Cleek. Your host was Norman Rose. Music by Albert Berman, engineer Bill Chambers. Dimension X is produced by Van Woodward and directed by Edward King.